Hey, 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 how's it going? I am live. I don't think I did this right. I uh, didn't join in on the on the uh, link that I was sharing earlier with everybody. Hopefully you can hear me and uh, and everything's going well. I'll give it a few minutes and uh, and let everybody know that I am here. Let's see if I can share this link. And... Uh, and let people, yeah, there we go. Let people know I'm here. Um, hope you're doing well today. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. All right, so that worked. Hopefully we can get people moved over now. And uh, on the right, the right link. And well, I hope you're doing well. I hope, uh, hope you're uh, getting some new ideas and some uh, some new insights on how to lead your business. I'm, I'm happy to have you here on my, uh, on my live. Uh, stream here today, and I am going to add some value to you. I'm looking forward to it. If you would, go ahead and let me know um, who you are and uh, what does your business do? Um, tell me. Tell me what's going on and, and where you're at, what you're doing. I'd love to hear from you, um, what part of the country you're in, uh, and, and what your business does. What do you sell? What service do you provide? And we'll get going here in just a minute. Let some folks get on here. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time to jump on here and, and be a part of this. Uh, feeling my way through this uh, this uh, going live thing. And uh, we'll just get better every time. But I want to get this content out to you. And and if we can, get some interaction and, and uh, have some time where we can kind of go back and forth. Uh, just a little more time. A little more time here today than just kind of a one-sided uh, throwing some content at you. But uh, you know, who am I talking to today? Who Who is this for today? This is for small business owners specifically. How to lead your small business through uh, uh, rapid change, which is what we are in right now. We don't know exactly what's going to happen moving forward, right? We're kind of, as a country, moving through uh, in the States here, moving through this, uh, the crisis time of the um, health crisis. And now we're looking at how do we reopen our country? Um, how do we reopen our businesses? Do we just hire up? Did we never let anybody go? Did that money come through and were we able to move forward? But this is for small businesses. This is for, for folks with, uh, you know, a handful to 500 employees. That's, that's, that's who I serve. That's my target audience and who I coach, speak and train for, uh, in organizations that I work with. And so this is for small business owners and operators today. It's for restaurant owners, construction companies, uh, regional banks, uh, mortgage companies, medical practices, um, property management companies. Those are some of the companies that I've worked with over the years. I know this content is going to be beneficial for you and, uh, it's going to help you out. And so that's, that's why I wanted to go live here today. Painting companies, it companies, uh, manufacturers, breweries, uh, accounting firms, retail shops. Those are those are some of the companies that this content today is going to going to help. If you're out there, give me a thumbs up. Let me know you're there. Let me know you're watching, and uh, let me know what you do. What does your business do? What are you What are you engaged in um, as a business? And then, what are your challenges? I'd love to know what your challenges are. I mean, I know I know a lot of the challenges that are out there. Right, cash flow being uh, one of the primary challenges that every single small business out there is uh, confronted with. Um, uh, safety concerns for your employee policy changes. I had one client uh, I was talking to yesterday, and they told me they had 14 new policy changes that they rolled out um, on on Monday, and they've been going through this whole thing. Uh, small business, they've been their essential business. They've been they've been going through this entire time, and they rolled out another 14 policy changes. And those are policy changes that they have to um, they have to walk their team through. They have to uh, hold their account, uh, their team accountable for. And so uh, lots of stuff going on that, uh, that, that is changing 
rapidly and we need to be prepared for. And so, uh, Bill, thank you for jumping in there. Strong Bridge Group. Actually, I've done some interviews with Bill and uh, I want to make sure that you guys can find those. Um, I'll put them in the description here. Um, got lots of content for you um, specific to this challenge and this crisis for small business own owners over the last few um, uh, weeks. Really been focusing in on that. Um, and so I want to make sure that you know where that content can be found. And so I'm going to uh, put some links in here for you and make sure that you can find that easily. Um, talked about transition a couple weeks ago with, with Bill. And this is a, a powerful um, teaching on transition that I want to I want to make sure that you have access to. So I'm going to put in the, the notes here. Uh, and make sure you get that. Anybody else out there, let me know you're there. I want to uh, want to engage with you, want to interact with you. There's a link for that video with Bill. Check it out on transition. Um, but let's let's jump into the content here, uh, and and we'll just flow with this thing. So, challenges. Tell me tell me what your challenges are. Uh, tell me what you're seeing, what you're hearing, what you're feeling. Um, what do you sense your employees are uh, are feeling right now? What have they told you? Um, are you engaging with them? Uh, your clients. Hopefully, you've reached out to your clients. This is the time where we want to go deeper with the clients that we have and, and make sure they know that we're here. We're here to support them during this time and help them navigate the challenges that are ahead. Your customers, your clients. Um, what's going on with them? Uh, and, and really, number one, when I, when I think about mindset, I kind of want to, as this teaching is going to go today, I'm going to share with you some ideas on uh, some of the research that I found. I, I feel like and what I put the most uh, trust and confidence in for myself personally is I like to find research based um, ways of improving myself, my business. And then I also like to to incorporate the best practices. So what are what are the people that are out there doing it, right? What are the small business owners? What are the, the leaders of leaders? What are they out there doing right now? And then what have researchers found um, that the, the folks that are successful through challenging times, what have they done um, to succeed? And so that's that's where I'm coming from with uh, this training today on how to lead uh, through rapid change. But one of my mentors, uh, Tony Ford, told me, uh, the number one rule in business. I love this rule. The number one rule in business is don't run out of money. And that's the key. That's that's what we have to look at right now. We have to figure out how can we get cash injected into our business, not, not a year from now, not six months from now, but now. How can we get cash flow in our business? Because uh, you can break every rule in business, right? You can break every rule in business. You can lack in communication. You can lack in leadership. But if you run out of cash, it's game over. Um, it's like Monopoly. You, you put all the pieces back in the box and and you might play another day, but you aren't going to play anymore today. And uh, and so we've got to keep an eye on our cash flow and uh, make sure that we are monitoring that. And uh, and some of the things I'm going to tell you are going to help out with that. Um, but let me start with with a quote that I love to share in my trainings. Um, and, and whenever absolutely shutting down not being able to go out and do business how maybe we've always done it, but having to modify and pivot our approach. And that's one thing that uh, I want to I want to share that video again on transition from Bill. He talks about pivoting and how to have that mindset to pivot. That's going to be huge in, in business right now is the ability to pivot and modify our approach. Um, thank you for those of you jumping in. I can see you there. Go ahead, give a thumbs up. Let us know where you're at, where you're coming from. And uh, what you do in your business, go ahead and share share what you do in your business. But let me share this quote with you. It says this. It's by James Allen. It's from a hundred years ago. I love it. And he says this. He says people are anxious to improve their circumstances, but are unwilling to improve themselves. They therefore remain bound. Now let me let me just slow that down a little bit. People, people like you, people like me, our clients, our family members, our friends, our employees, people are anxious. There's a there's a frustration. On the inside, people are anxious for what? To improve their circumstances. How many of us would love a circumstance to change right now? We love maybe our kids to be back in school. I'd love for to be able to go out and, and go to a restaurant with my wife, go on a date with my wife, get out of the house, right? We love for some circumstances to change. Maybe it's more serious than that. Those are kind of, uh, th th those are very serious things. The more serious things are what? 
maybe we'd like to get out there and, and, and get our business going again. Um, maybe, maybe we've totally been halted. Maybe you have a, a restaurant that you don't have the ability to, um, to do curbside pickup, or you haven't been able to do that yet. Uh, maybe you have a different type of business manufacturing. They're just, you're not essential. Maybe you have a small retail shop. You're considered non-essential and you cannot do business right now. And you have no online presence to, to bring income. We'd love to change the circumstance, right? People would love to change their circumstances, but he goes on to say, he says, but they are unwilling, unwilling to do what? Unwilling to do the only thing that any of us have control over, and that is unwilling to improve ourselves. So what's the result? We therefore remain bound. We just keep experiencing the same challenge year after year after year, going around that same mountain, wondering why do I keep ending up in the same place? I've tried different things and I just keep ending up. We've got to change ourselves and change the way that we think. And so after this, I mean, after this live stream today, you're going to be cured, right? You're going to overcome every one of your challenges. That's my prompt. No, I can't make that promise to you. I wish I could make that promise to you. But uh, but like the, the great Jim Rohn said, he said, we can't change our destination overnight, but we, uh, we can change our direction. And that's what I hope we can do during this time today is begin to change the direction that we're going in, the direction that our business is going in, the direction that our mindset is going in. And that's another, another training that I want to share with you on how to grow your business. I, I want you to, to look at a video, Six Steps to Grow Now, How to Recession Proof Your Business, because I want you to be thinking about, we talk a lot about this uh, in this video, we talk about how to recession proof your business. And so I'm going to put this in the comments here as well. And I want you to check that video out when we're done here today. So once again, I want to equip you during this time. I want to give you the resources so you can come out of this thing successful. Uh, the original thumbnail, and I'll get everything fixed after the fact for this, this webinar is, you know, pull ahead, fall behind, or die. And that's a quote from, um, from uh, Great by Choice, I think, is, is the title of the book. And uh, there's really three types of businesses. There's the ones that during a crisis moment, during a challenging time, uh, they pull ahead. And there are the ones that uh, fall behind. And then they're the ones that just totally die. And uh, unfortunately, every business is going to fall in one of those categories. Um, we want to be the businesses that, that pull ahead during this time. But there is going to be some of our competition. They're going to fall behind or they're going to just die. They're going to go out of business. They're going to say, this is, this is too much to handle. This is too great a challenge. They're just going to, like we talked about earlier, run out of cash and not be able to uh, continue moving forward after all this thing shakes out. We don't know how long it's gonna take for, for business to pick up to the, to, the, to the degree it was, and then we gotta play makeup, right? So, um, so I hope that this happens quickly. I hope that we're able to navigate this fast, but we just don't know. And so we have to do some things. We have to make some decisions now that uh, are gonna ensure that we have business three months from now, six months from now. We've gotta pivot, like I talked about, earlier. We've got to change our direction right now. And so um, so let me share some research with you to get going. There was a great study done by Harvard Business Review after or during the Great Recession. So during the Great Recession, they started to do some research and they looked back and then they looked current. So they looked back at the 80s, the 90s, 2000, and all the different challenging times that, that um, businesses went through, different um, retractions or recessions are some of the terms that, that are used um, in business. And so uh, through the 80s, 90s, and, and 2000, they looked at those, and they also looked at 2000 through, uh, this, was, this was in 2008 when it was published, and they found some characteristics of businesses that pull ahead, right? We want to be the business that pulls ahead. So um, some of those, those things that they found that the, the, the companies that pulled ahead, and the title of the article is Roaring Out of a Recession, right? We want you to roar out of this. We want you to be in a better position coming out of this thing than you were going into it. Um, and, I, and I posted something online yesterday that 85% of businesses um, that were market leaders before a recession are no longer the market leader. After 85% are no longer the market leader. Um, you know, it's easy to do business when when there's a lot of fat on the, on the bone. And that's what we've had lately. I mean, we've had a great... Economy. It's been a great time to do business the last few years. People have been willing to spend money. I'm in a training business, so I'm kind of on that. That uh, I'm right there with marketing, right? They would they cut that first, and um, and then you add on top of it this health scare. 
I can't go and meet with people, right? I can't go in person and meet with people. So um, I don't know where I was going with that. And this is live. So we're just going to, we're just going to roll with it. But uh, all that to say the market leaders, going back on my point here, the market leaders, uh, they weren't the market leaders after it. So, um, so we've got to position ourselves now. That's what I was saying. It's easy to do business when, when the economy is good. Now, Who's going to pivot? Who's going to navigate through this time? Well, let me share with you some of the things that they found. Um, and I'll, I'll read this for you. What strategies can companies use to survive a recession so that they'll thrive when it ends? And it says this, a year-long study suggests that enterprises that cut costs by focus, focusing on operating efficiency, even as they spend more than their rivals on marketing, R&D and assets are likely to be post-recession winners. And let me break this down for you. I, I read through it with a fine-tooth comb. I looked at some other articles, related articles, to really understand this. So you don't have to read it. You can read it. By all means, read it. Check it out. But you don't have to spend the time reading it. I want to bring this to you. What, what are some examples of cutting back operating uh, inefficiencies? Why well, I, I just so happened to do this. I, I'm, I'm grateful. I'd like to say I had this intuition or foresight. I did not, but I just knew that I needed to cut down on my operational inefficiencies. In the end of last year, I cut down um, on my, what I call my ego space, right? My office space. Um, I had a nice office in downtown um, and it was in a high rise building. It's something I always wanted. I accomplished it. I was there. Um, but, but I just began to realize that it was unnecessary. It wasn't necessary. It was more for me and my ego and something of feeling like I had arrived that I could have an office there. And, um, and so, when my lease was up, I didn't renew. That's an operational uh, inefficient. That's something that I didn't need that I could cut out. Okay, so I did a few of those things last year, but I wanted to re-examine. I re-examined my current situation, and I found that there's a there's a, a software uh, that I use heavily that uh, is really a redundancy. I have two softwares that do many of the same things, and one that I'm not using as much. And uh, I mean, I'm, I'm paying some cash for this thing. And I was able to save 10% off of my operating costs by cutting this out. Now, I don't care another product or another service that does many of the same things. You need to figure out which one is the priority and make a cut there. Now, this article also said that, that the companies that did really well post-recession, they didn't... They, they didn't cut as many employees as their, their uh, counterparts, their competition. So I want you to keep that in mind. Like employees are the last thing for many reasons. There's going to be, if you, if you have employees and you begin to cut employees to, to save uh, money and to get your overhead down, and that's your first, your first cut that you're making, you're going to drop morale. And then on top of that, um, it, even if you have $10 an hour employees, there was a, a, a great study done years ago, I'm trying to remember by Ken, um, I can't remember his name, but uh, uh, I'll, I'll share it with you. I'll, I'll put it in the comments later. But for a $10 hour an employee to, um, to, to rehire a $10 hour employee costs you $10,000. You're talking about training, onboarding, um, getting them up to speed where the other employee was. So a uh, high cost of turnover, that's the name of the article, the high cost of turnover. And so um, you want to make sure that, that you're not turning these people over because you're going to we're, we're going to make our way through this. Right. And you don't want to have to rehire people that are unskilled and try to find good fits again. So so let that be your last resort is cutting, cutting employees and then marketing. OK, so they talked about marketing. And uh, if you just think about it from a very I, I was really trying to ponder this and I looked at some other marketing materials to really wrap my head around marketing during a time like this. And you got to just think competition, right? Um, a lot of people are cutting, cutting their marketing budget first. And, uh, and they're saying, hey, we're just going to slice that down. It's non-essential. We're cutting it out um, to make sure our budgets are, are okay for the rest of the year. Uh, the problem with that is now that that, that, just, that just opened it up for us, right? Now there's less competition in marketing. So if you have some cash set aside that you can spend, you cut down on those operational inefficiencies. So I, I did that yesterday. I'm, I'm using myself an ex, as an example in my own business. I cut down on some operational efficiencies. And now I'm going to take those funds and I'm going to funnel them into marketing and funnel them into promoting my business 
and promoting the new things that I'm doing, right? So, um, so you got to be thinking that way. How can you, they, the companies that roared out of the recession outspent their competition on, uh, on marketing. So those are two things you want to do. Now, a couple, couple things. They really encourage being aggressive um, in your business, which that would be aggressive, right? Cutting down the efficiencies, but then also spending more in marketing at the same time, which can be challenging. You might have some employees, you say, hey, we're going to take away this, this software. Maybe use myself as an example. We're going to take away this software. I know you use some of the tools in there, but um, but we're going to cut it out. We, we, we just believe that we can make it with the other softwares that we have. And then you funnel that cash into marketing, you're going to have to communicate with your people, right? You're going to have to talk to them and kind of massage that and let them know, look, we're using best practices from research done from companies that have succeeded and, and come out of these recessions, depressions, re retractions, smelling like a rose. We want to be like them. And so these, these are the things that they did. And they, uh, they spent more on marketing. And just for myself as an example, I mean, I'm, I'm, I am going aggressive with this. Um, I added it up 22% of the money, the cash that I have on hand today. If I didn't make another dime for the rest of the year, 22% of my cash on hand is uh, I've already committed to marketing, to, to promoting my business. That's aggressive, right? If most companies are, are right around 10% or less on marketing, um, that's aggressive. But I believe during this time, uh, for one, that, that I'm going to make more money. Uh, and I, I, I'm a little bullish on that. I feel good about that. But I also believe that um, that it's a necessity, that it's very important that I, I double down on what I'm doing. Now, we're going to talk about this some more um, later, but I also made a pivot, right? So R&D, what's, what's R&D for a, a coach speaking training company, right? R&D for you, you, you know, research and development, it's going to be different. But for me, right, it's, it's pivoting and recognizing. I see a lot of speakers that have built their entire business on speaking um, and they're suffering right now. And, and many of them, and I, I, I hate to see this, but, uh, I, I see, you know, blogs on LinkedIn and different things and, and they're, they're lamenting that their business has gone or that their business is, you know, they're canceling appointments into next year and asking for refunds. And that's horrible, right? That, that, I mean, I don't know what else they do, right? Unless the organization they're working with is, is willing to work on a webinar, I don't know what they do, but here's what you can't do. You can't get stuck in what your business was going to be. I was going to have a breakout year this year. I mean, my first quarter was amazing. I'm so thankful it was, right? Because now we're where we're at. Um, so, but, I, but I have cash, right? So, so very fortunate that way. But this was going to be my breakout year. Well, well, why can't it still be my breakout year? Why can't, it st why can't I maintain my same goal, but just have a different path of getting there? And many times, I know myself, um, I, I remember... I, I, Years ago, I lived in Santa Barbara, California, and there's there's um, some nice foothills. And you can look from the bottom of a foothill and you can say, you know, I'm looking up at this foothill and, and I'm going to navigate. I know exactly the path I'm going to take to to get to the top of the, the foothill or the top of the mountain. But it's totally different when you're when you're there on the ground and you're confronting, you realize, hey, I couldn't see from my my first perspective that there's a there's a cliff right there and I'm, I'm, I can't climb cliffs. I'm gonna have to navigate around that thing. Right. That's really how we, where we found ourselves right now in business is look, we all thought we had a plan for this year and how we were going to get to our goals and where we want to go. Um, and then coronavirus came, things change and there's always going to be things that change. So what are you going to do? That's the question you have to ask yourself. What are you going to do when those things change and, and, and how are you going to navigate around that new obstacle. And I remember years ago, I talked to John Maxwell, one of my mentors, and I asked him, I, I knew that he started many businesses. And I asked him, I said, hey, I know that you've started many businesses. And, and um, you know, I, I didn't even know, I felt kind of silly or insecure asking him this question. But I said, I don't know if you ever run into walls in business, but what do you do if, if you run into a wall? And I think we can all identify and say, hey, we're in a wall right now. We've hit a wall. And, um, and he said, uh, he said, absolutely. I run into walls every day. Um, I run into walls and they actually, the John Maxwell team, which I'm a part of canceled an event early on that was going to be in March, 3000 people. Right. And, uh, and they had to cancel that thing to make sure everybody was safe. And that, that cost a lot of money. That's a wall, right? Um, you run into walls. Now he told me a few things, but one thing that stuck out to me that he told me when you run into walls, he said, you have to assess 
the wall, right? You have to assess the wall, assess the situation. My my go to was just hit the wall over, just back up. I'm kind of a I'm a big guy. I I was a lineman in high school, and so my go to has always been if if to force things, right? If I can't, if I if I don't succeed the first time, just back up and, and hit it again, back up, hit it again harder, give it more effort, give it more energy. I have a lot of energy and low IQ. So that was always my thing, right? But um, but what he said is he said, you have to stop, you have to look, you have to assess, you have to, you have to look, can I go over this wall? Or do I go around this wall? Or do I dig under this wall? Or can I break this wall down? But you've got to stop, you've got to look at the wall, you've got to assess. The, the wall, assess the situation that you find yourself in. And that's what I want to encourage you to do. You've got to stop. You've got to assess. I did this a few weeks ago. I'm very fortunate that I'm in a mastermind group. I'm in, I'm around people that are, are, are uh, great business minds beyond me. One, I posted the video of Raj um, and, and I'm around people and interviewing people constantly like Bill, where he talks about things like pivoting. And then we hit this, uh, this challenge. And then I talked to Raj and in our private sessions, he challenged uh, myself and another another friend in our mastermind group. He said, hey, you've got to figure out what you're going to do in business that's going to have cash flow coming in six months from now. And I told him my marketing strategy. He said, that's your great, that's great. That's your long-term strategy, which he was absolutely right about. And he said, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about what is going to bring in cash flow. Remember, you run out of cash, you're done. That's the number one rule in business. What is going to bring in that cash flow so that you can continue to move forward in the weeks and months to come? And I had to pivot. I had to look at the wall. I had to stop. I had to step back and I had to say, I could, I had to stop saying would have been, could have been, should have been for this year and start saying what will be this year? What will I do? How will I pivot Um, And I'm going to have an opportunity for those of you out there, business owners, operators, a a free opportunity Um, for those of you that are business owners and operators. I'm going to share that with you in a few minutes because I want to invest in you during this time and uh, and help you out. So, um, all right, let me keep moving, keep moving. So companies. Companies, this is this research. A couple more things, and I'm going to share some insights with you. Companies that only cut costs heavily during a downturn didn't flourish after it ends. So it's not just about cutting costs. It's about cutting. It's that. It's it's a it's a three parter, right? We cut costs. We assess. We figure out. We do some R and D. We figure out what is going to work moving forward, and we spend more on marketing than our competition. Okay, that that's the three part. If you want to know the companies that roar out of recession, I don't know what that means for you and your business, right? I don't know exactly what that means. I'm sharing this training with you. I'm sharing some insights on what I have done in my own business. You're going to have to interpret that for your business. Let me just go in and tell you, if you're a business owner or operator out there, this is what, what I was mentioning a few minutes ago. I was going to wait a little longer, but I'll just tell you right now. Um, I want to offer you 30 days of free coaching to help you determine if you are of the mindset to pull ahead, to fall behind, or to die. And you might have already said, you know what, I, I just don't have the energy to move forward. And your business is going to die. You know, that's the choice you're making. But but some of you, um, you don't know what to do. You don't know where to go. You don't even know where you're at. This thing is hitting you so fast. You need a coach. You need someone. I'm sharing with you principles and insights. You need someone that can stand beside you and help you create awareness and action steps. And that's what that's what coaching does. It does two things. It's not complicated. Coaching, one-on-one coaching, not group coaching, not, not a mastermind group, not group training, none of that right now. One-on-one coaching, everything rises and falls on leadership. And the decisions that you, I'm talking to business owners and business operators, the decisions that you make that you make are at least 10 times more important than your mid-level managers and anybody else on your team. The decisions you make are vital during this time. You need a coach. You need someone to help you get greater awareness, create clarity and greater awareness and then action steps. And that's that's what I want to be for you for 30 days, help you navigate through this time and um, and be successful and be, be a company that pulls ahead. So uh, I'll, I'll tell you how you can do that in a minute. But uh, anyways, I told you what the research says, right? Three steps. Once again, operational inefficiencies, not employees, right? Employees are a last resort. We want to keep on our employees. 
Uh, and if you if you if you took uh, money from the federal government, you got to keep on your employees unless you want to pay that that money back. Number two, R and D. Right? What are you going to do? Some of these businesses, these restaurants, they pivoted. They've totally done uh, to go. They they didn't have to go before, but they've pivoted and they're doing to go business and they're staying afloat and they're keeping some of their their team um, working every day, right? So you've got to do R and D, whatever your business is. Figure out research and development. Throw some things out there, see what sticks, and then you got to market heavily. You got to market more than your competition, whatever that looks like. For me, I said twenty two percent of my cash on hand going towards marketing. It's wild. It's crazy. I'm a gambler. I know, but um, but but that's what I've committed to do. So you've got to do those three things if you want to roar out of recession. All right. Um, that was a lot. That was a lot of preamble. Let's jump into uh, into the teaching here today. So, how do you um, uh, lead your small business through rapid change? And number one, number one point here: to lead your business through rapid change, you must be decisive. You must be decisive. Now, I've defined decisiveness this way: the ability to make decisions effectively and efficiently. It's not enough just to, to be effective in our decisions, in our decisions, because maybe we're effective in the decision, but it takes us six months to get there, right? Too late, too late in this thing, right? You've got to be effective and efficient. It's not enough just to be efficient. We want to be effective, right? If you're going to pick one, I would say be efficient, like just be quick and move and move and move because you can, you can, you can fix things if you're moving forward. It's easier to turn a moving car, right? If you got a stalled out vehicle, um, it's hard to turn the steering wheel. But if, if it's moving, you can turn it. So even if you make a mistake and you turn too far to the right, you can always bring it back if you're moving, if you're decisive. If you turtle up and you and you decide to put your head in the sand and not do anything, you're dead. Uh, if you deny, you'll die. That's, that's what I want you to remember. If you deny, you'll die. Now, I, I remember talking about decisions years ago. I used to go cliff jumping in Sequoia National Park. I grew up in Visalia, California. And, uh, and it was about two hours up into the mountains and uh, we could jump off of cliffs 40 feet to 60 feet high. And um, there was uh, the snow melt down there in the bottom. And so the, the snow would melt off the, the mountains and they'd come down and these, uh, these creeks and, and streams below would swell and give us enough depth where we could jump. Well, I remember one time climbing across the, uh, the, the path we had to go. We kind of had to navigate and, and hold the side of the wall. And there was a toehold and a... And a and, uh, a, a finger hold and you you climb across and navigate this area to where you could get and jump. And I don't know. I remember now. Yes. I, I saw blood. I was, I was on the, the, the toe hold area where you just have enough to, to barely get your toes and hand holds. And it's not 90 degrees, but it was, it was just slightly less than 90 degrees um, or more or whatever. I guess it's more than 90 degrees. And I'm going across that that area and I see some blood and it totally freaked me out. Right. And I'm like, Whoa, blood's here. What happened? And, and I freeze and I look down and I realize that if I fall, I'm falling 30, 40 feet right now onto rock. Like I'm not in the water. I'm not going to make it into the water. And, uh, and I just froze and I was there and I remember doing this. I don't know how I did this in my mind in a very short amount of time, a couple minutes, I realized, look, I'm, I'm, I'm frozen here out of fear, fear of heights. I'm frozen. But the reality is I can't, I can't stand here and wait for the only way I'd get rescued is by a helicopter, right? I can't stand here and wait. And so, uh, so I've got to figure out how to will my body across this thing and, and navigate across. And sure enough, I did. I was able to convince myself that the only way that I was going to get out of this thing is if I kept moving forward. And let me tell you, the same thing is true with your business. The only way you're going to get out of this thing is if you start making decisions, you get decisive. You, if you want to lead through rapid change, you've got to get decisive. You've got to make decisions. Um, there was a, uh, some research done at Harvard uh, business school and, and they found that the, the top executives, the, the, uh, influencers of influencers, the leaders of leaders, they had about four qualities in common. And one of the qualities that they had is that they were decisive. They made decisions. It doesn't mean that they, they always made the right decision, but they weren't afraid to make a decision. And friend, small business owner out there right now, please do not get caught on the cliff 
like I was, or maybe you were at first. I can relate. When this thing first hit, I thought I, I just froze and I was like, I don't know what to do. You see all these memes on social media about just like watching Netflix all day and you're like, is that my response? That doesn't feel right. That doesn't, that doesn't seem like what I should do. And you, you get around people, you watch a webinar, you watch this, this live stream, you, you get around a mastermind group around some people, you get a coach, something like that to help you walk through that, right? Get aware of what's going on and then take those action steps moving forward um, and, and, and continue that process. Be decisive. And how do you make better decisions? How do you make better decisions? You've got to identify your priorities. Um, you got to identify your priorities. Now, all of us have the priorities of, of uh, you know, making sure that our employees are safe and sales. So it's pretty easy right now, right? I got to, I got to ensure safety, which means a lot of policy changes. And I've got to, I've got to make sure we get sales. So if you've been the best salesperson on your team in the past, but you haven't been doing that because you haven't needed to, maybe you need to pick up the phone. Maybe you need to be lead salesperson. Um, and that's going to be what's going to help you in your business navigate through this challenging time um, moving forward. But the best question you can ask yourself is what's important now? What is important now. So how do you determine what is most important in your business? Um, if you haven't already, I highly encourage you to um, uh, write up a strategic plan. I've got some, I've got a whole playlist on strategic planning that, uh, that I encourage you to look at on my channel. If you go to my, my homepage, you'll see it there. But, uh, but strategic planning is huge. Figure out where you're at and it's time to revisit that, right? Where am I at now? What am I doing right now? What do I need to do moving forward? Not what was or what did happen or where where I could be or where I would have been if this didn't happen. Look, friend, this happened, okay? So all we can deal with is what we're, we're facing right now and where we're at right now. And so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put the link here in here. What is strategic plan? I've got a whole playlist there and this will get you access to the playlist and, and take care of you. I want to resource you, but put together a strategic plan. Number two, how do you, uh, how do you determine what is most important now? Um, ask yourself the three R question. Uh, what gives me the greatest return on investment? I had to ask myself with my business, what is going to give me the greatest return on investment right now? Look, I do speaking. I was, I was at a, 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 a training. I was doing a, a speaking event in Arkansas, two days before we got shut down, right? So I speak, I train, I do a lot of small business training in person uh, around the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex, which is where I live. And then I do some, some video um, uh, training and then I coach. But training has, is really the, the, the biggest part of my business. That's what I do more than anything else. I assess, I train, and I go into business as well. There's not a lot of training happening right now, right? And it's going to be a little bit psychologically before people are ready to move back into training. Um, if, they're, if they don't want to do virtual training, then it's going to be a while. So what is the customer-centric? What do our customers need right now? How can we serve and meet their needs? If we want to stay customer centric right now, the greatest thing I could do, I realized, was coach the CEO, coach the, the business owner, coach the operator of the small business. That's going to bring about the greatest result immediately. It's going to serve them through this crisis. I can do it absolutely free. And maybe out of that, I gain some coaching clients, right? So, so I have to look at what's the greatest return on the investment of my time. And it's going to be that right there. It's going to be coaching people pro bono. Um, just like Costco, right? Free to fee. I'm going to give my services away in hopes that I add enough value to my new potential clients that they say, I want to continue this coaching relationship. You, you help me get a game plan together. I want to help you. I want you to help me walk through this. And so that's my plan, right? So that's what I'm going to get the greatest return on my investment time in crisis. I don't care about that right now. I don't care if, if, if you like doing something, you figure out what brings in the cash flow and that is your priority. Um, and then number number three, uh, determine uh, what gives you greatest return on investment, uh, and then uh, what's required of you. Yes, so greatest return on investment, what's rewarding to you, and then uh, what's required of you. What must you do um, to keep things going, keep your business going? Figure those three things out. You're going to identify your priorities, um, and then along with strategic planning. And, I, and at first, I was like, you know, strategic plan. This is not the time or the place. That was my immediate thought, but I, I got uh, I got a new perspective on that from a coach in my life, Raj Tedla, who I've interviewed many times 
on this channel, I got a new perspective with that. This is the time that you really figure out what are you in business to do? My dream is to help you live yours. And a lot of you small business owners right now, I mean, that's my stated mission. That's been my mission. A lot of you small business owners, you, you see your dream crumbling in front of you. Um, that My wife yesterday, she just missed, she said, my goodness, I want this thing to be over so that we can get your business back to where it was. And isn't that the, isn't that the desire of every business owner out there? You see this, this dream of owning a business or, or, or owning multiple businesses or hiring and, and employing people so that they can have the kind of life they want, right? My dream is to help you live yours. And I really had to double down on that and go, yeah, you know, I want to help these business owners be successful. How can I best do that? And that's how I figured out um, how I'm going to serve my clients during this time. And so you need to go through that same process. I got some free resources for you. All right, number two, I'm going to go through these, uh, try to go through these faster. Um, how do you lead your, your small business through rapid change? Number one, be decisive. Number two, properly assess the situation. You've got to properly assess the situation. Years ago, I was going over a friend's house. It was dark. It was late at night. And uh, I was picking up something and, and I knocked on the door. My, my uh, girlfriend, who's my wife now, girlfriend at the time and brother were in the car and they were parked across the street. And I'm walking up to this house and I knock on the door. Now, this guy had a, a huge Rottweiler dog and I could hear it barking in the backyard and uh, I was a little freaked out, you know, um, but I, I went up, I knocked on the door. He wasn't home and I kept hearing the dog bark and I, I was walking back to the car and I'm in the middle of the of the yard and it must have been fall because there are leaves on the ground. I hear the chain link fence. It was just one of those little four foot chain link fences. I hear it shaking and rattling. And you know, the sound of a dog, like jumping over a fence or climbing over a fence. And I could hear it. And then I heard the dog land in the leaves and then start running. And I booked it. I mean, I ran as fast as I could across the street. I jumped over the, the hood of my wife's, uh, Toyota Camry slid across it like a you know secret agent right across, and then I'm banging on the on the front door on the window there. Open the door. The door was locked. I'm like trying to open it and banging on the door, and I look inside the window and my eyes kind of adjust to the to the light, and I see in the car my girlfriend and my and my brother laughing and laughing and laughing at me, and then pointing across the street. And my eyes are adjusted now, and I look up and I look across the street. And there's this little Rottweiler puppy, maybe four months old, tiny little thing, just looking at me like, hey, you want to play? And uh, and the other dog was way in the backyard and tied up and everything else. What did I do wrong? I misread the, the situation, right? And, and because I misread that situation, I misresponded to that situation. And I, I, I operated out of fear. I misread the situation. You've got to properly, if you're going to lead your team through rapid change, you've got to properly assess the situation. Let me share you share with you the right perspective. You know, those businesses and the research that I was sharing earlier, there was really, there was the pessimist and the optimist. They both turned out about the same in business. Um, if you're operating with a pessimistic mindset and you're just cutting everything, you're, you're, you're not going to do great through this recession. If you're operating as an optimist and you're just like, oh, this isn't going to affect us. This is going to be okay. Um, you're going to be in about the same boat as a pessimist. You're not going to do, do well. Um, and we already mentioned, if you deny this whole thing, you're going you're gonna to die. So, so what's the right perspective? And uh, the perspective that we all want to have during this time to properly assess the situation is the, stocks, the Stockdale paradox. The Stockdale paradox. And the Stockdale paradox says this. It says, unwavering faith that you can and will prevail with the discipline to confront, confront the most brutal facts about your current reality. Um, let, let me share with you where this comes from just real quick. Author Jim Collins found a perfect example of this paradoxical concept in James Stockdale, former vice presidential candidate who during the Vietnam War was held captive as a prisoner of war for over seven years. He was one of the highest ranking naval officers at the time. And during this horrific period, Stockdale was repeatedly tortured and had no reason to believe that he would make it out alive. Seven years in captivity. I mean, we haven't even been in for seven weeks and we're all freaking out, right? Many of us are, are, are climbing the walls. 
Seven years, this guy was, was abused, beaten, tortured, and in prison. Had no reason to believe he'd get out. Um, uh, held in the clutches of the grim reality of this, of this hell world, he found a way to stay alive by embracing both the harshness of his situation with a balance of healthy optimism. And, and he goes on to say that the optimists were the first ones to die because they always believe that just around the corner, things are going to get better. Friends, we don't know. We, we don't even know how this thing is going to shake out. I hope it does, but I'm going to be prepared that it's not. And so Stockdale explained this idea as following. He said, you must never confuse faith that you will prevail in the end which you can never afford to lose with the discipline to confront the most brutal facts of your current reality, whatever they might be. Friend, if you don't know your operating overhead, if you don't know what it costs to keep your, your business open and functioning right now, if you don't know the, the grant money or the cash that's available to you, if you don't know um, uh, uh, what your options are right now, you need to go ahead, jump off this thing, come back, watch the recording later. You need to go figure those things out. You need to figure out what the current reality of your situation, how many months can you stay afloat if you have zero cash flow coming in? How And, and what do you need to do? What do you have to do? What has brought in the income? Whether you like it, that task or, or that thing or not, I had a, a client uh, a few years ago that we worked with him in coaching and upped his profits by 40%. How? By figuring out and identifying what was that year over year, 40% profits. What was that thing that, uh, that, that brought in the profits more than anything else? Identifying it. And he didn't really like doing it. He didn't want to focus in on it. But when we, we looked at the numbers, we said, we have to focus in on it. It's not about what you like. It's about keeping your business moving forward and gaining and, and getting more profits. So the simple explanation of this paradox is it's the idea of hoping for the best, but acknowledging and preparing for the worst. This is a question you can ask yourself. What do I know to be true? And this is especially good if you're kind of having a panic attack, right? You're kind of freaking out. Maybe, maybe I scared you with what I said. Ask yourself the question, what do I know to be true? What do I know to be true about this situation? I know that, that this country has gone through many, many challenging times. Depressions, wars, what do I know to be true? Uh, I know that we've overcome that and that businesses have made it through it and they've thrived and they thrive. And we've all, maybe you had your own personal recession last year or the year before, the year before that. It wasn't related to the, the greater economy, but it was just you, you, you hit a rough patch. You hit a struggle. I know this to be true. You've made it through every challenging day you've ever been through. You've made it. Now, this might be the this might might be the most challenging time, or different, a different type of challenge. But ask yourself the question: What do you know to be true? Begin to work your way out of that. Get a proper perspective of your situation, and um, and move forward. Once again, I do want to tell you. Uh, I mentioned coaching earlier for the business. This is this is only for the business owners and operators. And uh, I, I only have 10 slots available for this. So when they're gone, they're gone. And um, I am going to prioritize people that have more employees because I want to be able to help as many people as possible. And that's the best way that I can do it at this time. But please, everybody reach out. And, uh, and who knows how long this will go. Maybe, maybe I'll have time to, uh, to do a second, third, and fourth round of, of helping businesses out like this. But um, what you can do is you can go to my website, drewtjackson.com backslash contact. And it's also in the notes of, uh, of the description here. I'll have that in the notes afterwards or in the notes of every single one of my videos in the description. I'll have a contact me for coaching. And you just go there, put, put in the notes there, if you would for me, put the name of your business and how many employees you have. Because like I said, I do want to be able to prioritize um, the, the uh, coaching sessions for the business owners that have uh, the small business owners that have the most employees um, or the most people to lose their job. And so that's that's how I'm prioritizing that. But uh, please reach out. Don't be afraid. If, if it's just you and you're a solopreneur, if I have um, the availability to do it, I want to help you too. And, uh, and so um, what I'm giving you, once again, two to six uh, sessions, 30 days of coaching where 
Specifically, we're going to focus in on how you are pivoting during this time and identifying if you're a company that's going to pull ahead, if you're a company that's going to fall behind, or if you're a company that's going to die during this time, and then getting you to a place where you're going to pull ahead, right? And really walking through um, your overhead, your challenges, your niche, and, uh, and and putting together a strategic plan on how you can move forward. So um, so anyways, that's that's that. Um, number three, the third thing you need to do to lead your business, your small business through rapid change is you must read the people to lead the people. Um, uh, yes, I did just rhyme. You must read the people to lead the people. You must be able to read your people. Know the state of your people. How are they doing? How are you doing? How are you doing right now? How's your family? What's your situation? What's your mindset? You know, we all have a different ability to cope with things, whether it was how we were raised, how we grew up, challenges we've made it through, or the challenges that have broken us. And you're going to have team members that some of them, they're going to make it through this. They're going to have the right mindset. They're going to they're going to be positive, but also have a grip on reality. They're going to have that Stockdale paradox. They've got it and they're moving forward. But there are going to be others that this is absolutely breaking them. And the stress is overwhelming to them. You've got to identify and you've got to know your people. Now, I'm not saying that I'm not a therapist. I can't, I can't, uh, I can't help you through that, but you need to know the state of your people and then help them get help, right? You've got to know where your people are at so that you can properly lead them to where they need to go. And the same thing is true with your clients. You need to know where they're at. And it's funny because I, I was in construction years ago and there was a guy that was older than the rest of us. I was in my 20s and he was in his 30s. We were all plumbing apprentices. And um, he always used to say, the only feelings I got are in my teeth. And uh, that's right. But uh, we all have to deal with the the psychological heaviness, the weight of this, the weight of of just not being able to do what we want to do, the freedoms that we're accustomed to, um, the stress. I know myself, I, I just, I wasn't, I, I, I wasn't built to be in the home all day and, um, and deal with the kids. That sounds so bad. Um, I, I can do it for seasons and for stretches, but, uh, but man, it, it weighs on me. And, uh, and my wife and I, we, we, I'm very fortunate. We're able to, to do some give and take and she's able to work full time at home. Um, but it's challenging, right? And we all navigate that to different degrees and different abilities. And so you need to know, you need to know how your people are doing. And uh, let me give you three questions that every single one of your employees, everything, every one of your customers, your clients, three questions that your, your spouse, your children are asking you at this time and at every time. This is great marketing material right here that you, you need to think through. Three questions that your customers, employees, spouse, children, et cetera, are asking you. Number one, they're asking you, do you care for me? Do you care for me? Your employees want to know right now, do you care for me? Your customers want to know, do you care for me? Do you care for me during this time? Or because I can't generate income, are you not going to call me? Right? Do you care for me? Number two, they're asking you, can you help me? This is what I have to ask myself. I, I, I do content related to influence, influence trainers, the name of my channel. So we talk about communication. We talk about leadership. We talk about sales, right? Those, those are the three categories that we talk about. Influence, influential people have a lot of qualities. And so I share about those different qualities. But at the end of the day, I serve my client base, who I'm interacting with day in, day out. It's small businesses. I'm going to be on a, on a webinar training, 7.30 a.m. tomorrow morning with a ton, a whole region in the state of Wisconsin of, of HVAC dealers and uh, installers and small business owners. I'm going to be sharing with them these same principles, right? Small business, that's who I talk to. That's who I connect with. That's who I relate to. And I have to ask myself the question, can I help them? right? Can I help these people? And then how can I help these people and make sure that I am providing you, the small business owner, the small business leader with the information, with the resources, with the training so that you can go out and be successful and uh, continue to lead your, your business through this uh, rapid change that we find ourselves in right now. And then number three, they're asking, can I trust you? Had a great conversation with the guy bringing me in to do the training in this region. And, uh, 
and, and, and it, it all came down to trust. And this, this process I've been working with, with uh, this gentleman for about a year. And he said, I intentionally was taking my time with this because I've built tremendous trust with my dealers and with my people. And I'm not going to let anybody come in and just ruin that and break that trust. But I've determined and, and through our relationship and through our connection, through our conversations and our emails, and then he's been able to participate in some of my training through that. He said, I trust you, right? Those three questions. That's what your customers are asking you right now. That's what your employees are asking you. Do you care for me? Can you help me? Can I trust you? Until you can answer all three, three of those questions. Um, you're not going to you're not going to really know the the state of your people and you're not going to have full trust with them and i have a video specifically dedicated to trust if you just search trust on my my page on influence trainer it'll pop up and you can you can see some tips on how to build trust but one thing i will share with you is a, a quote from zig ziglar and he says this if you help people get what they want they will help you get what you want all right so um, the final thing, four steps to lead our business through rapid change. Step number four is you must communicate. You must communicate frequently and effectively. You must communicate frequently and effectively. Um, it's about at bats. You know, it's baseball season, even though it's not baseball season. And uh, you want to get as many at bats. You want to get as many chances at uh, swinging the bat and hitting that ball as you can. And the same thing is true with your communication with your team daily. Uh, you want to communicate regularly. My clients that are, that are just killing it with this, uh, this whole challenging time, the leaders that are really doing fantastic. I'm so proud of them. I'm so proud of my clients. Um, they are, many of them are talking with their employees, their team members daily. They're having daily meetings to update. I mean, we see this with the president, right? We see this with governors. They're having daily updates with their constituents on what's different today. And you might repeat a lot of the same things, but you're giving those regular updates. That's going to calm your people. And it's also going to inform them and help them adjust. If we look at a disc perspective, different personality styles, you can find the content on my, on my channel about disc and different styles. Um, under communication or sales, depending on what you want. But um, from a DISC perspective, you've got 60 plus percent of the population that is, that they're really struggling with the change that we're going through right now. The best thing you can do is give them regular updates. You want to commu communicate frequently with your people. It's all about at bats as many times. Now, how can you communicate effectively? Well, Watch those disc filters to filter through, and then we'll close it out. Three communication filters. Um, if you are communicating with a leader, so let's say you're watching this and you're not the senior leader of your organization. If you're communicating with the senior leader, a person that leads you in the organization, you want to communicate. The filter you want to use is a filter of honor. You want to have honor in your communications with them, uh, honor their position, honor their sacrifice, honor them as a person, honor them as a teammate, right? You want to have honor in your heart as a filter when you're communicating. So what do I mean by that? I mean that everything, if, if we think about a filter, a water filter, right? Um, things that are not pure water get caught in that filter, little stones, little pebbles, pebbles, little debris, or if it's a, a, a higher end filter, it's going to catch little particles that we can't see, right? You want to filter your communication. So everything that comes through, if it's not from an influence perspective, it's going to increase your influence. Um, Zig Ziglar said you catch a lot more flies with honey than vinegar. If you, um, you can call it stroke in their ego. I don't care. Whatever it is, I don't care about what I have to do. And I talk to my, my coaching clients about this all the time. It doesn't matter um, what, what I have to do. Uh, if I get the result that I'm looking for. So if I have to humble myself or I have to um, uh, put things through that honor filter and it makes me feel a little bit uncomfortable at times, that's okay. Um, I want to make sure that I get the end result that I'm looking for. And I'm willing to do that if it's me, the result. So co communicate that you're committed to the vision. If you're talking to a leader of yours, you're communicated to the vision. Um, tell them that you honor them and their achievements and, and their leadership. Um, support them publicly 
and privately and from time to time as necessary, ask them for help in certain situations. That's how you honor. Next, um, when you are communicating to um, a, a direct report, one of your employees, someone that's coming to you, you are their leader, right? When you communicate with them, you want to communicate value. You constantly want to have value coming through. Uh, we look to our leaders, and I don't, you know, you, I don't know what kind of psychological thing this is, but I just know it to be true because I'm a, I'm a student of humans and a student of people. Um, we look to our leaders many times as we, uh, like we do our, our parents or a parental figure, and we want to feel valued just like we wanted to feel valued by our parents, right? We, we want to feel that they value us as a person. They value our contributions on the team. But if you're a senior leader, if you're a leader and you have people that, uh, that report to you, let them know that you value them, that you value them, that you value them, that filter, everything that comes out needs to be, we value your contributions on the team. Even if you have to tell them hard things, you have to tell them challenging pieces, you have to tell them, uh, maybe you have to cut back some hours. Hey, I want you to know through this whole thing, we value your contributions to the team, but we do need to make this change. We, we got to cut back hours so that the organization can sustain and all of us in the near future, hopefully can, can be back up to the hours or to the, to the salary that we were um, before this challenge, right? But communicate that value that you're interested in, that you, that uh, look them in the eye when you talk to them, right? Make sure you got that eye contact that communicates. I value you're important enough for me to stop what I'm doing, look you in the eyes and, uh, and give you all of my attention. That's how you communicate value. And then number three, um, the third filter is respect. Um, if we're talking to our peers, if we're, if we're uh, working with someone that is a peer of ours, we want to filter everything that we do through that filter of respect. Um, you might not think that the, that your peers deserve the same job as you. Maybe you have a peer, you're on a team, and they're just failing through this whole challenge, right? They're withering. They're not leading their team properly, and you're you're killing it. You're, you're rising to the occasion. You're doing great. Um, they're still your peer, and you still need to respect them. They got the role. Uh, for one reason or another, they are your peer based on what your uh, your leader has um, determined. And so talk to them with respect. Filter everything that you do with them with respect. And if you put into practice those communication filters, you're going to communicate much more effectively with uh, with those around you, whether they're your leaders, your direct reports, your employees, or your peers. So I hope that helps you. Let me, let me share this with you in closing. Uh, as this whole thing started, I, I listened to uh, uh, something that Adam Carolla said on, on a YouTube video. And, um, and he said this, he said, do the time, don't let the time do you. Kind of a prison reference. And, and sometimes that's what it feels like being in uh, this, this quarantine time in our homes. Uh, do, do this time, meaning make decisions on what you're going to do during this time and how you're going to make this whole thing a success. What, what new insight you're going to have. I've seen people say what new skill you're going to learn. Okay. If you have time to do that, great. How about the person that you become through this whole thing that you're going to be a person that rises to the occasion that you're going to be a person that, that, that doesn't quit, but you persevere that you're going to be the person that figures out how to get the greatest return on investment of your time and your energy and your effort so that your business can continue and you're going to pivot. You're going to be the type of person that pivots in a challenging time and, and overcome, right? The, 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 the times that we're in the circumstances that we find ourselves in so that you can uh, overcome these challenges and, and uh, we won't change our destination overnight, right? But we can change our direction. And so once again, if you're a small business owner, uh, if you own a business, if you're, you're, a small business leader, a senior leader specifically, um, you're the CEO, you're the president, you're the operator. Um, I want to help you. And the best way I can help you during this time is through one-on-one -on -one coaching. And so that offers there, it'll be available um, for as long as it's available. I can't, I can't put a timeline on it till these, till these 10 slots are filled, but reach out. Even if you're watching the, um, the replay of this, reach out, uh, request the information and, and I'll let you know exactly uh, how many slots I have avail available and what it looks like. I hope this helped you today. I hope you have some insights on how to lead your organization, some practical um, best practices. 
And then also some information on research that's been done over the years of companies that, that thrive out of these times. And um, connect with me, like and subscribe to my channel. Um, hit the bell for notifications so you can know when we go live like this. Or uh, every Wednesday, I have a new video that comes out um, that's going to help you better lead your company and increase your influence so that you can uh, realize your dream. And so thank you so much for 